there is one experience that every human shares of every language and culture, the experience of birth. Our recollections of birth are hazy at best. They have the feel and aura, not so much of memories as of mystical transfigurations. It would be astonishing if this profound early experience did not influence our myths and religions, our philosophy and our science. The birth of a child evokes the mystery of other origins, the beginnings and ends of worlds, infinity and eternity. How did the universe arise? What was around before that? Might there have been no beginning? Could the universe be infinitely old? The current scientific story of the origin of the universe begins with an explosion which made space itself expand. About 15 billion years ago, all the matter and energy that today make up the observable universe were concentrated into a space smaller than the head of a pin. The cosmos blew apart in one inconceivably colossal explosion, the Big Bang. And the stuff of the universe, together with the fabric of space itself, began expanding in all directions. The early cosmos was everywhere white hot. But as time passed, the radiation expanded and cooled, and in ordinary visible light, space became dark as it is today. But then little pockets of gas began to grow. Tendrils of gossamer clouds formed. Colonies of great lumbering, slowly spinning things, steadily brightening, each a kind of beast composed of a hundred billion shining points. The largest recognizable structures in the universe had formed. We see them today, we ourselves inhabit some lost corner of one. We call them the galaxies. We inhabit a universe of galaxies. There are unstructured blobs, the irregular galaxies, globular or elliptical galaxies, and the graceful blue arms of spiral galaxies. We've been investigating the galaxies, their origins, evolution, and motions for less than a century. These studies extend our understanding to the farthest reaches of the universe. We view the cosmos on the grandest of scales. The majesty of the galaxies is revealed by science. The galaxies reveal a universal order, beauty, but also violence on a scale never before imagined. The universe seems neither benign nor hostile, merely indifferent to the concerns of such creatures as we. But we don't yet know whether the universe is open or closed. More than that, there are a few astronomers who doubt that the redshift of distant galaxies is due to the Doppler effect, who are skeptical about the expanding universe and the Big Bang. Perhaps our descendants will regard our present ignorance with as much sympathy as we feel to the ancients for not knowing whether the Earth went around the sun. If the general picture, however, of a Big Bang followed by an expanding universe is correct, what happened before that? Was the universe devoid of all matter and then the matter suddenly, somehow, created? How did that happen? In many cultures, the customary answer is that a god or gods created the universe out of nothing. But if we wish to pursue this question courageously, we must, of course, ask the next question. Where did God come from? If we decide that this is an unanswerable question, why not save a step and conclude that the origin of the universe is an unanswerable question? Or, if we say that God always existed, why not save a step and conclude that the universe always existed, that there's no need for a creation, it was always here? These are not easy questions. Cosmology brings us face to face with the deepest mysteries, with questions that were once treated only in religion and myth. In 
one cosmology, the universe is created somehow from nothing 15 to 20 billion years ago and expands forever. The galaxies mutually receding until the last one disappears over our cosmic horizon. Then the galactic astronomers are out of business. The stars cool and die. Matter itself decays and the universe becomes a thin, cold haze of elementary particles. In the other, the oscillating universe, the cosmos has no beginning and no end. And we are in the midst of an infinite cycle of cosmic deaths and rebirths, with no information trickling through the cusps of the oscillation. Nothing of the galaxies, stars, planets, life forms, civilizations, evolved in the previous incarnation of the universe, trickles through the cusp, flitters past the Big Bang to be known in our universe. The death of the universe in either cosmology may seem a little depressing, but we may take some solace in the time scales involved. These events will take tens of billions of years or more. Human beings, or our descendants, whoever they might be, can do a great deal of good in tens of billions of years before the cosmos dies. Some scientists wonder, in an oscillating universe, about what happens at the cusps, at the transition from contraction to expansion. Some think that the laws of nature are then randomly reshuffled that the kinds of physics and chemistry we have in this universe represent only one of an infinite range of possible natural laws. It is easy to see that only a very restricted range of laws of nature are consistent with galaxies and stars, planets, life, and intelligence. If the laws of nature are randomly reshuffled at the cusps, then it is only the most extraordinary coincidence that the cosmic slot machine has this time come up with a universe consistent with us. Do we live in a universe which expands forever or in one where there is a nested set of infinite cycles? There's a way to find out the answer to that question, not by mysticism, but through science. Every human generation has asked about the origin and fate of the cosmos. Ours is the first generation with a real chance of finding some of the answers. One way or another, we are poised at the edge of forever.